Right here, Mike Hart. Well, that means that Condors, this is the week that we're going to see them back on the ice. And welcome in to our hour-long show. I'm Carrie Osep, and we're calling this Breaking the Ice as we preview the upcoming season for the Bakersfield Condors, as well as look back at their historic season just a year ago. And of course, I'm going to be joined by many players, the head coach, as well as many from our 23 ABC family. So we're going to be talking to Jessica Wills, who's going to give us a look at what happens inside the arena. Matt Lively's going to be chatting with the voice behind the plays as well as Scott Sheehan and Mike Hart giving us a look as well at what is going on during the Condor season and what you can all expect. But before we get to all that, of course, we got to talk about that historic season a year ago that included a 42 win season for the Condors and their first ever Calder Cup playoff appearance, something that is memorable and we won't soon forget. Take a look. 2018-19 was a history-making year for the Bakersfield Condors, a team full of young faces and a few veterans being led by first-time head coach Jay Woodcroft, and that just happened to be the right mix. The first barrier the Condors broke was a 17-game winning streak, the second longest streak in American Hockey League history. When the streak came to an end against the Iowa Wild on March 1st, the focus completely shifted to the team's ultimate goal on the season, reach the Calder Cup playoffs for the first time. We set out a goal of trying to make the playoffs and that's the big thing for us. The way the team is playing the game has been excellent. Uh, we're going to take uh, a lot of the good that happened in the game tonight and we're going to use it in our game plan tomorrow. Um, the streak is over but there's no reason we can't try and win a game tomorrow and start a new one. Not only did the Condors reach those playoffs, they also claimed the regular season Pacific Division Championship and finished as the top team in the Western Conference with the most goals scored per game and the fewest total goals allowed. The first would continue as they won a Calder Cup playoff series against the Colorado Eagles. The Pacific Division Finals featured thrilling overtime wins and a loss, and then heartbreak in San Diego as the goals eliminated the Condors in Game 6. Take your cap and, and uh, learn from it. There's a lot of young guys in this room that uh, got some bright futures, so... Um, whether they're here or in Edmonton, it's, uh, you know, it's a good foundation to build on. That foundation is solid heading into the new season with the return of many key factors from the Condors team from the year that won't soon be forgotten. Yes, yeah, so now to talk about this season that we were just looking at as well as the upcoming season, I'm going to be joined by head coach Jay Woodcroft. Coach, thank you so much for joining us and welcome back to Bakersfield. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And so I do want to talk to you first. When we look at that historic season, obviously so many memories, but for you as the head coach, your first time, you were the one leading the way there. What sticks in your mind, do you think, or what will stay with you throughout your career about that, sing that single year? Well, what would stay stick with me is just the hard work and determination of our players. Uh, couldn't be more proud of the effort that they turned in day in day out and I know that uh, when I took the job and had a opening uh, press conference I talked about facing a team that this community would be proud of and that group last year certainly laid a great foundation. They are connected to the community. We're real excited about building on that this season. No doubt about it. You can already feel the buzz around Bakersfield that this team is back in town. And of course, coach, for you in the offseason, you were able to re-sign with the Oilers organization. What went into that decision? What was so important for you to be able to return and actually get back here to Bakersfield? Well, the, the big thing for me was that I felt there was a little bit of unfinished business. Um, like I said, we laid a good foundation last year, but there's more to be done. And uh, for me, when the opportunity to present itself uh, to, to come back in the this type of capacity I was real appreciative of that opportunity and I'm going to make it my mission to be the coach that these players deserve. And with that too in mind you are returning quite a few of the guys from last year so not only with you at the helm you're getting a lot of those familiar faces how good does that feel to be able to bring those guys back to the ice here in Bakersfield? Feels really good um, I thought one of the best things we had last season was a strong core leadership group uh, full of veteran uh, type players who set the uh, example and work ethic tone for our group uh, and it just allowed the young players to fall into line and we return a lot of those players this year as well as some of our younger players and yep. exciting ones from last <laughs> season as well so uh, we're real excited the fellas have put in uh, some good work over the last 
month in preparation for the start of our year and we're excited about it. And I know coach last year I asked you this question during the season but talking about the development of young players that's something that at this level at hockey you're able to do so for you to be able to get a second chance with some of these guys and help their dreams come true to maybe make it to the NHL officially what does that mean to you? Well it's a huge responsibility like I said I want to be the coach that these players deserve we believe here at Bakersfield that uh, developing is a critical part of uh, being a coach at this level but at the same time we want to do it in a winning environment we want to teach these young players how to win and how to get better every day and we're going to push them and hold them accountable and uh, try and help them maximize their potential and I know the Bakersfield community loves to hear that the winning ways but what makes you so excited to return here to Bakersfield and here too uh, the family has joined you this trip yes uh, that's big for me is that my wife and twin daughters have joined me uh, here in Bakersfield and that makes me a happy man because it gives me something to do uh, when my work day is done <laughs> and so uh, you know just to immerse myself in the community uh, I was just at a kids soccer practice a few minutes ago is <laughs> before this interview and uh, you know I'm getting to know a lot a lot more of the people here in Bakersfield through school through youth sports and I'm a happy man that my family's with me and like I said we're we're gonna work hard to make sure this community is proud of this team this season and uh, like I said I can't guarantee any of the results but I can guarantee you that they'll be proud of this team. Absolutely and a last quick question for you if you could sum it up in one word what these players are going to bring to the ice this year what would that be? Work ethic. Work ethic. That's we'll two words. <laughs> but we'll take it. it. Counts for me, Coach. And obviously, we're so excited to have you back. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. And, guys, we are going to have so much more coming up in our show. We have plenty to get to. But, of course, before we head to the look at one of those big time plays that we saw throughout the year and that would be from none other than Patrick Russell. But stay tuned for more from Breaking the Ice. Welcome back to Breaking the Ice live here at Mechanics Bank Arena. Of course, the Condors and the first 20 seasons of hockey, it was the Oilers, Fog, and those Condors who enjoyed many successful seasons and plenty of 40 winning, 40 win seasons, excuse me. But a Pacific Division title eluded them until just 10 years ago when the Condors won their first two championships and 23 ABC's Mike Hart is here to tell us a little bit more about that history and when they got those first two titles. Ladies and gentlemen, would you congratulate the Pacific Division champion, Bakersfield Condors! Thing, and there's two banners hanging up in the rafters, obviously that's a, a great accomplishment. We had some pretty good teams that year. We didn't have the success that we wanted in the playoffs, but to go back to back and win Pacific Division Championships is definitely something to be proud of. Whether it's the team from last year, whether it's the team from 10 years ago or 9 years ago, it's special because winning um, a division championship, is, it's very difficult because you have the call-ups, you have, you have guys that get injured, there's a lot of movement and be able to sustain uh, that push and finishing hard and, and pushing guys every day and uh, making sure they understand it's a big deal, it's, 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 a, it's not easy. Yeah, huh? there isn't this kind of give when I played, that's for sure. <laughs> Andrew Iannero and Marty Raymond, the two remaining pieces from those championship teams that are still in Bakersfield today. In fact, AI spent most of his professional life here. Still live here, met my wife here, um, had some great times on the ice and off the ice, so nothing but good memories when I look back on things. The Condors have always had talent. The handful of jerseys that hang on the wall spotlight just a few of the players who made a name for themselves in this unlikely hockey hotbed. But in the 2009-2010 and 2010-2011 seasons, it all came together. It was kind of a power hockey. We had some skills and we have some power. We had some big boys playing, you know, but we talk about Bobby Robbins. They had the, we had the Guillaume and we had a good skills. And we had a, um, uh, the guys from, from Anaheim were, were great guys. And, you know, we're tough to beat. For those two championships, we had affiliations at the time, and we would probably be considered a little bit of a younger team. Um, we had a couple players that went on to play in the NHL, which is obviously exciting. Now the Condors have a third title. They're first in the AHL, joining a very exclusive club in Condors Town. The fans here is unbelievable. So when they wanted to win so badly, so when they had that, they were happy, they were satisfied. Well, they were never satisfied, but they were happy. Because when you don't win titles, the fans remember you for other things. On 
February 24, 2008, the Condors and Fresno Falcons added another chapter to their storied rivalry. It was a frustrating year that year, one of the few that we had, but sometimes you gotta do something to show that you care, and it wasn't because I wanna, it was a stage. Uh, although our ownership said, hey, you gotta do something, and once I had done it, uh, you know, I ended up paying the fine on myself, so. Yeah. I, I know one thing is I was right, so. <laughs> the game has changed today. It's a little faster, still physical, with not as many fights, but just as many memories, especially for the old guys that stayed in Bakersfield. You know, we, we try to get together once a week or so to, to have a skate and really? there's probably 10 or 12 of us that, that played here at one time or another that show up and get out and you know smack the puck around so there, there's a good chunk of us still living here for sure. So this Friday as the 2019-2020 season kicks off the Condors will raise another Pacific Division banner the first in 10 years with plenty of room for more. And of course, that banner ceremony will take place this Friday. We'll be looking forward to that. And thanks so much to Mike Hart for giving us a look at the rich history here in Condorstown. And I know wherever Mike Hart is, he is probably preparing for the season, very eager to be back in that box and announcing during the games. And it's, I mean, it's almost like you can just hear him now. It's like his voice never leaves the, well, actually, Mike, Mike, is that you? Is Mike here right now? I think I see him. Welcome to Mechanics Bank's Arena for tonight's AHL season opener against the visiting San Diego Gulls and your defending Pacific Division champion, Bakersfield Condors! Thank you. Thank you. 16 seasons. 16! Starting number 16, this is going to be a lot of fun this year. And can't wait to see if the Condors can go ahead and defend that Pacific Division crown. The two banners are right up there. And during Friday's season opener against San Diego, during the pregame introductions, the Condors are bringing out the entire team. All the players will skate out onto the ice. All of the, uh, the uh, hockey staff, the coaching staff will all come out and be introduced. And it will all end with the unveiling of the new Pacific Division banner, championship banner, that will be on Friday night and the guys back here on Saturday. Interesting side note here, as I was looking back over the 10 years of Condors Hockeys since they've won the title, I've got a couple of jerseys. This is the newest one of the collection, but I noticed in the video that the last time the Condors won those Pacific Division crowns, they were wearing this one which is one of my favorites. Oh, and this one, which I think is my absolute favorite. So I know maybe it's an omen. Maybe we're looking uh, forward to doing very well. I'll leave it at that because I don't want to jinx anyone. So um, why don't we send it back up to you, Kerry Osep. <laughs> So I hope Mike has one of those 23 uh, jerseys for me. I hope he's not holding out this season because I need one too. But it's like the man never leaves here. But we love it because he obviously loves his job. But of course, when you talk about hockey and sports, there's something else that comes to mind. It gets you a little hungry because you love all of that food, right? Well, that's something we want to bring into the show, too, to tell you about all of the good eats and drinks, as well as the promotions that are happening this year in Condorstown. And to tell you a little bit more about that, we are going to send it over to 23ABC's Jessica Wills, who's going to have more on what to expect with the promotions this year in Condorstown and, of course, at Mechanics Bank Arena. She's got a lot in store to share about the fun that we're going to have here in the arena. And I think we're trying to get out to her. We're hoping that we can get out to her so she can tell us about all of those promotions and the fun. And I'm just going to buy some time here to get her ready. She's got a lot to talk about, so she's getting it all prepared. But of course, there's some good stuff out here. And with that, I'm going to send it over to Jess. Hey, Jess. Yeah, Carrie. Well, the Condor season, of course, kicks off this Friday night. Puck drop is set for 7 p.m., but there are a bunch of other special dates that you're going to want to keep on your calendar for the season. And joining me now is Matt Riley, president of the Condors. Matt, 
let's talk about this scarf. On Saturday, this is one of your $5 frenzies. I mean, that's super exciting. Tell me about your $5 frenzies. Well, you know how cold it gets here in Bakersfield. So, uh, and it actually is a little cold in here with the ice, but uh, yeah, fans can get up to two scarves, only $5 a piece. They look great. Uh, we, and we do this oftentimes. We've got on our 50th anniversary moon landing, we're gonna be selling these caps for $5 a piece. Uh, later in the year, we've got $5 fanny packs. We're doing five five dollar uh, Harry Potter wands so uh, the fun continues 365 yes and there's also another special night you guys are doing on December 14th a Derek Carr jersey giveaway tell me about this night yeah pretty excited about this of course Derek's from Bakersfield we've worked with him for a while and got his permission to do a, a giveaway with his jersey so it's going to be a camo jersey uh, um, Raiders themed with Carr on the back and well, uh, I want to bring Cooper Marodi in here because we have a special bobblehead night for you Cooper and you have a guitar in this so tell me why are you wearing a, a guitar on your bobblehead yeah it's something uh it's really cool I think uh I've been I love the bobblehead uh I uh, released two songs this summer on iTunes Spotify and Apple Music so I'm um, something that I really have a big passion for and uh you can check out the songs and and I'd uh, love to hear what you guys have to say about it thank you so much I wish you the best of luck this season Carrie So obviously we're looking forward to those bobbleheads and you got a sneak peek of the one from last year that includes Josh Curry. Of course we're going to have more on this team and him as well, but before we head to break we're going to show you a huge moment for Josh Curry last year, maybe a tip of the cap to Josh. We'll have more coming up for Breaking the Ice, stay with, or stay with us. Two to go, second frame. Condors have a 3-1 lead and a shot at the face up, they score! It's Josh Curry with a hat trick. What a shot to score! Josh Perry in double. Oh, What an incredible shot there from Josh Curry. Yet again, a great highlight and, of course, a great call. And we know here in Condorstown there have been some memorable calls throughout the years. And, of course, that would be none other than Ryan Holt giving those calls. And with that, we are joined now by 23 ABC's Matt Lively, who has more on the voice behind the calls. Hey, Matt. Hey, Carrie. Yeah, the game of hockey is all about the guys on the ice, but without one man, you might actually not know what's going on. What started as a childhood interest has become a full on profession for the play by play voice of the Condors. Ryan Holt was determined to be the play by play voice of the Bakersfield Condors. I actually applied for the job fresh out of college back in 2010. Uh, I didn't actually get the job the first time. Uh, the job reopened the, the following summer and ended up uh, getting it the second time. Holt grew up in Massachusetts and loved listening to any Boston announcer. He got his own start calling games at an early age before they were actually real. My parents would say, I think when I was younger, um, I used to broadcast my video games. Um, and I think that's how kind of most people, or at least my age, kind of got their start was uh, playing video games and you just happened to call the action as you were going along. Those video game calls have turned into more than a hobby. Nearing almost a decade in Bakersfield, Holt has seen the Condors rise from the ECHL to an AHL team with a trip to the Calder Cup playoffs just this past season. I've been very fortunate here in Bakersfield and um, in terms of the game, it's it's grown you know on me every year and um, to be able to have American Hockey League hockey here in Bakersfield is just tremendous and, and the caliber of hockey we see on a nightly basis he settled in nicely in Bakersfield, although team president Matt Riley knows there's still a little bit of East Coast in him. Well, besides his Boston accent uh, that has kind of mellowed out a little bit, we're, we're okay with it, I think. Holt also serves as the director of media relations, a job that drives him to the office about 13 hours before any puck drops. You know, there's a lot that goes into a game day that's not just, you know, show up, put a microphone in front of your face and call the game. Um, you know, even in-game, it's, it's a lot of social media, it's a lot of interaction, and, and it never stops, really. I don't know what we'd do without Ryan. We'll, we, we would figure it out one way or the other, but uh, Holt, Holt is great and does a lot of stuff, you know, not in his job description. With season nine quickly approaching, Holt is already hard at work, but knows one day this job may take him to another arena, another team, and maybe another league 
with the word national in front of the title. And now I'm joined by the guy that still has a bit of a Boston accent, <laughs> Ryan Holt. Ryan, you're entering year nine here with the Condors. You must have a million memories, but what are some that actually stick out to you? Yeah, I mean, the outdoor classic that we held at Memorial Stadium uh, on the campus of BC was awesome. The 17-game win streak last year. Uh, just being a part of this team last year, the move to the AHL and just seeing the growth of, of everything here in Bakersfield is just fantastic and uh, consider myself very fortunate to, to be in my position. Yeah, and I mean, there are a scatter of players who take this ice for the Condors, and that means you you might have families from the East Coast, yeah. from another country. I mean, what's it mean when you know that people are staying up past midnight, one, two in the morning, just to hear your call? <laughs> I think they're watching the team. But uh, <laughs> if uh, you know you had told me nine years ago I'd, I'd be here in Bakersfield, I would have called you probably crazy. But uh, it's kind of become a second home. Uh, I met my wife Haley here. Uh, my parents. You mentioned um, you know the families of, of the players yeah. watching. My, my parents watch all the time. My grandparents uh, back home in Boston. So uh, it means a lot. Uh, it's great support here in Bakersfield. That's why we have uh, such a great and fun job to do and um, you know having their support back home means everything to me and uh, you know it's just a fantastic opportunity. Yeah and you can hear Ryan you're streaming games you're on the radio from time to time but he's here when the Condors <laughs> play his Boston accent and all but uh, you're great to listen to and so we're, we're excited for another season. Thank you I appreciate it and appreciate uh, this uh, this time here today yeah. this is awesome. Yeah all right well back to you Carrie let's uh, let's hear what you've got. Thanks so much, Matt. From the voice of the Condors, now to the captain of the Condors, and that would be none other than Keegan Lowe. I'm joined with Keegan right now. Hey, Keegan, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Great. So, of course, I want to start with the success of last year. I mean, to have all that you guys had out there on the ice and all the memorable moments, what really sticks out in your mind from that season? Oh, I think, I mean, there's many things, you know, we had an unbelievable season last year, but six out when you're looking back on it is just the cohesiveness of the team. You know, we had such a, a great team. We had so much fun together. And I think that, you know, speaks to a lot of the su success we had on the ice because we had so much fun together and we really bonded. Um, you know, it's one of those years we'll never forget. We would have, we wished it could have went a little bit longer than it yeah. did, but, uh, you know, really great memories for sure. And with that in mind, for just that right moment there, you guys didn't get to the ultimate goal of obviously making it to the Calder Cup championship. So is that going to leave a little bit of motivation for you guys as you get all returned back here to Bakersfield and open up the season on Friday? Oh, 100%. I mean, our goal last year was, you know, to get to the playoffs, but, you know, not just that, to continue on from there. Every year, the ultimate goal goals to call the cup but we got that taste last year you know a little bit of a little bit of taste in our mouths and 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 then we fell short so I think that sat in our stomachs all, all summer and everybody was thinking about it all summer and now we're back here and it just gets you that much more excited to get going and I'm sure it's great for you. you talked about the chemistry and as the captain leading this team you're returning a lot of the same guys so how much confidence is that bringing to Condors Town this year with the same amount of guys coming back yeah, I mean, th that's huge, you know, like I said, we had we had such a tight group last year and lots of those, like you're saying, lots of those same guys are back. Uh, some of the new guys were here at the end of the year and, you know, got to got to get uh, into the group a little bit. But, you know, it, the excitement's been here from day one. As soon as everybody gets back together, you know, it's like getting the band back together. So I think <laughs> I, I think that's huge for us this year is, uh, you know, carrying the culture we had last year into this year. You know, there's some new guys that are going to help us a lot, right. some really talented young players. So, um, you know, we're going to welcome everybody with open arms, knowing that it's going to make our team a better team. And quickly before I let you go, talking about excitement, you had an exciting summer. Can you let everyone know uh, what change happened in your life this summer? Uh, I got married this summer. So so, yeah, it was, it was a big one, that's for sure. We yeah. had we had a lot of fun and, uh, you know, couldn't be happier. Well, awesome. Congratulations to you on that. And, of course, we're looking forward to the season, looking forward to all these guys getting back on the ice. That happens Friday. But, again, we will be back with Breaking the Ice. But before we go, we're going to take a look at the greatest hits. I think uh, Keegan may have one of those. Here are the best hits from last season. Welcome back. When it comes to Condor's game day, we know that there's plenty of places where you can enjoy right here in town in downtown Bakersfield. And 23ABC Scott Sheehan took a trip around town to show you the best places to eat before, during, and after the game to enjoy your night out. Go. 
Condors out. I got my Condors jersey on. That just means it's game day here in Condors Town. Having the right game plan will help you maximize your night out here in downtown Bakersfield. Here's a list of some of those businesses that'll get you fired up for your Condors. Step one is head right across the street from the arena to the downtown red zone sports bar and grill. We're on game day. It's happy hour, 3 to 7 p.m. Let's go and check out what kind of deals they have for food and drinks. Sliders and fries, tacos. These are a couple of things that are on that happy hour menu that will get you ready to go next door into Condors Town. Or if happy hour isn't your thing, come over to the Tower Craft Bar and Grill where they have a special Condors game day buffet. And of course, there's their orange and blue drinks to get you into the Condor spirit. Pre-game yeah. over, it's time to get into Condors down here in Bakersfield. Tickets ready to go, let's go Condors. If your pregame didn't fill you up, there's still the concession stands, even ice cream over here inside the arena. Oh, you can go to the backhand. It's not just all about food. You can also get your Condors gear at the merchandise stand inside the arena. Can we have full screen? Center, here come the Condors on the break. Cross ice scores! The game over success because we pre-game properly. Now it's time to go out downtown and have some fun. Just behind me, the Fox Theater. To my left, the Mark. And then down the way, the Padre Hotel. All of this just steps away from the arena here to help you celebrate your night out in Condors Town. Now remember, if you do so, do so responsibly. Here in downtown Bakersfield, Scott Sheehan, 23 ABC, connecting you. Thanks to Scott for that look at what it's like to enjoy Condors Town around town. It looks like he had a busy night. Well, of course, there's nothing better, though, than what you can get for the in-game experience here in the arena. And with that, I'm going to toss it back to Jess Wills, who has more on what the food and drink experience like is like for our home games. Hey, yeah, Carrie, I'm out here on the concourse. This is typically where you'll find me during Condor's game looking for some food. And I'm joined now by Chef Michael. They have some new eats that they're introducing this season. So if you would take me through what you guys are offering this season. Absolutely. Uh, this season we have uh, a carved tri-tip sandwich. It's a smoked tri-tip. Uh, it's on our, on our concourse stand called The Block. It's made with our house-made chips. Comes with a side of salsa. Uh, Matt's going to do all our taste testing in here. And then moving right along, you guys have this. Tell me about this. Uh, that is a chicken fried corn dog, and we actually serve it with a side of sausage gravy. It's something new we're trying this year, something a little different, uh, a little down home as well, and it's actually really, really good. Yeah, that looks exciting. And then I want to talk about this salad. This is a carne, asa carne asada salad. Yeah, right? Yes, it is a carne asada taco salad, obviously a, uh, a house-made uh, taco shell, also served with a side of salsa, uh, and it's kind of one of our healthier options that we're trying to go with this year. Yeah, definitely good to have some healthy options here in stadium for people um, and then this was also really cool this is a full-size helmet you guys are doing refillable helmets tell me about this that's correct uh, it is a full-size hockey helmet uh, you get a punch card with five refills uh, good throughout the regular season and uh, they're they're selling actually very very well so it's a it's a really cool little promo deal and then we got to mention these two I'm totally a Doritos girl so what do you have going on here this is uh, this is a, a new concept we have as well it's called the top and go um, we just dump some nacho cheese in it, stick a fork in it, and call it done. Yep. Classic, right? Good. Good. And then, of course, we have some beers here on the table. Um, Friday night is our $2 beer nights and $1 hot dogs. So that's always a fun time. Come out. It's like happy hour on a Friday. $2 beers, $1 hot dogs. Um, that's going to happen on this Friday because we're kicking off. So, Carrie, I'm going to send it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Uh, make sure to save me some food and drink out there, okay? It looks like you guys are in the fun place. Well, as you know, a big part of the promotional events for the Condors would include the teddy bear toss. And as we head out to break, we're going to give you a look of that special night. Stay tuned. In front, Gabriel Della, Richard scores! Joe 
Marinella lets the fur fly. Welcome back to Breaking the Ice. Of course, last year's success was cultivated by many players on the ice, but maybe no more so than the guys in net. And all three of those goaltenders are returning to the ice this year. That would be Stuart Skinner, Dylan Wells, and Shane Sterrett, bringing a lot of personality and talent back here to Bakersfield. The most fun about being a goaltender is well, there's an easy answer to that, which is just stopping the puck. Something all three of the Condors goalies do well. Last season, they made more than 1,800 saves between all of them. The goaltender with the most experience for the Condors, Shane Starrett, accounted for 1,238 pucks blocked through 50 games. Despite who had more time in the net for Bakersfield, these three guys all knew that's exactly where they needed to be from a young age. My uh, younger brother was playing with me at the time, and he wanted to be a forward, I wanted to be a goalie, and that's just, I've been a goalie ever since. And whether it was the gear or just, I mean, being the last man back, there was something about it that just drew me the, to the position. Once I put my uh, first pair of pads on, I never looked back. Even as I climb to the higher levels, it just gets more and more comfortable as I play more and more games. Something that's not easy to do when the puck is flying at you consistently throughout the game. I don't think I'm, I'm scared of the puck. I hope I'm not scared of the puck. <laughs> Oh, that's just me? No, so I, I mean, you get nervous once in a while for games, especially if it's a big game, you want to perform and you want to play well, but um, getting in front of the puck is no big deal for me. Not really for any of the guys who all played in the biggest of games last season, making Calder Cup playoff appearances. A unique experience for this young group. You got me at 25 as the oldest, and those guys, you know, 20 and 21 years old. We call ourselves a unit because we're always the three out here early, putting in our work, and we just have a good time as a goalie unit. A lot goes into this goalie union success. You got to be the most flexible. You got to be, like, strong and, and uh, have that mobility as well. And but do they call themselves the most talented on the ice? I don't want this video getting out to my teammates and them hear me say that. I don't know if I can answer this one. <laughs> so many talented players everywhere, so you can't really say that. You can't just be a big body anymore with how more athletic the forwards are getting, how more precise their shooting is. You gotta be athletic to make some of those saves sometimes. I'm not gonna say there's one that's the most talented. I think everybody has their job and it's just about coming to do your job every day. I guess you can add humble to their stat line too. While they all remain in sync the team can bet they'll be putting their individual talents on display every goalie is different in their own way and if that guy stops the puck that way that's kind of his uniqueness of his expression of how to play hockey and it's just a way to express kind of who you are and just being able to express to everybody the kind of person you are as well so i think that's a lot of fun and it'll be fun to watch those expressions in the new season and of course, we had to bring in one of those three goalies to talk about, for me personally, this is one of my more fuel, or fearful positions on the ice as being a goalie. And I'm bringing the top guy, Shane Starrett, with me. And Shane, we joked about that a little bit, yeah. but, I, but I mean it. It's a little bit of a scary position to be in, but you have no fear out there. But what really brings you into the net and makes that the position that you love so much? Uh, I just grew up and loved it at a young age. It's something that I've always loved doing, something that I've enjoyed. Yeah, I wouldn't enjoy it at all, probably. I'd be scared. <laughs> but but you're obviously really good at this position. As, along with your other two guys, there's so much talent between all three of you. So how cool is that? And how much does that sharpen the iron, as they say, make you a little bit better when you have those two other guys pushing you? Yeah, they're both great. And Wells is uh, he's in Wichita right now, but he's pushing to get back here. And the three of us, we have, we have some good times on the ice, but we all know we're battling for the same spot and pushing each other each day to get better. And for you two to return back here in Bakersfield, obviously in the offseason, you're all kind of fighting for a chance to be up there in Edmonton, but you get to be back here in Bakersfield and, and try to get even further and deeper in the playoffs this year. How excited were you to get back here to Condorstown? It's great to be back, you know, all summer long, you kind of miss, start missing this place <laughs> and it's good to be back and good to see the team. We had a lot of the, uh, a lot of good core group of guys return and a lot of good young guys coming to the team, so it's an exciting year. And I know this isn't as cool as uh, the helmet that you get a little goalie mask here, but tell me about how cool is that? That's a big part of what you guys love about your position is the uniqueness of the goalie mask. What makes yours so cool? Uh, I just, I, last year I went with a two-tone mask where one half is white and one half is blue, so I kind of changed it up this year and went one blue, one orange. And 
pretty much a lot of that goes in the mask is our own designs and you talk with the helmet painter and you know he, he's an artist so he knows yeah. what would look good and what doesn't so it does look good you probably wouldn't wear this one no, uh, no. I, I might be fearful on that one <laughs> <laughs> i'll save this for me well we do have uh, cooper marodi standing by with matt lively this is a busy guy tonight but we're going to toss it down to matt who can talk about one of the guys that takes shot on shane starrett hey matt Hey, thanks, Kerry. And now I'm joined live with Cooper Marodi. And Cooper, you're kind of a busy guy tonight. You already had one interview. Uh, I'm curious. You, you have such good goalies on this team. How has it made you better just shooting on them and learning from them? Absolutely, yeah. We have great goalies on our team. And um, every day in practice, they're tough to beat. So um, you have to bear down on every shot. And if you have an open net, um, they can still take it away. So um, like I said, they're great goalies. Uh, just in general, the Oilers system is flourishes great prospects and really great talent, and I'm sure you feel lucky to be a part of that. Just getting to develop alongside these guys and learn from them in a good crop, what has that done for your development? Absolutely. It, it's been so great, not only having guys to learn from and, and grow with my age, but there's great veterans here that myself and other prospects have learned so much from, and that's going to help us to be better pros and, and make it to the NHL and be a regular at the NHL someday. So um, those guys have been great for us, and you know, fellow prospects have been great for me as well. Uh, last year, first trip to the Calder Club playoffs for the Condors. What does it feel like coming in this season versus how it felt last season, now that you guys have that under your belt? Absolutely. We, we know what it takes now to get to the playoffs, and it was a tough first year. We battled through a lot of ups and downs, and we ended up having a great season, but it's all about you know, starting from day one on Friday and, and proving why we had success last year. Um, we had a good run in the playoffs as well, and we, we had some injuries at the end of the year that you know, prevented us from having a full roster and playing and whatnot, but we're really looking forward to this year to proving why we were successful last year and building on that and getting that end goal of winning a Call Cup championship. And just quickly, you're from Michigan. You were a Wolverine. You've been up in Edmonton. How does Bakersfield compare to all of this? Because the fans are so passionate here. Uh, yeah, they are. The fan base has been phenomenal. Um, the weather's pretty good as well. I think <laughs> walking to the rink in December wearing shorts is something that I've never been used to in my entire life. So it's something that I love. And the city's been great. You know, we have great turnouts for the games, like I said. And it's just a great community that really supports our team. And I'm excited to see you and the rest of the Condors start this Friday. Uh, Kerry, back to you. We're looking forward to seeing this guy this season. Thanks to Cooper and Shane for those interviews. And, of course, we know, once again, the goalies are bringing success back to Bakersfield. We can expect it. And here's some more moments that we can expect to see from these netminders. <laughs> there are only two more. <laughs> One's at soccer. <laughs> Welcome back to Breaking the Ice. I had to come down to the ice because, Matt, I mean, this is where we want to be, right? Yeah, we just don't have skates, so it's, uh, it's a little slippery. <laughs> a little bit slippery, but we also wanted to be joined by one of the coaches for the Junior Condors. Hey, Andrew, so if you could just tell me, uh, we're seeing a lot of talent behind us. Is this the future of Condors Town? Absolutely. I sure hope so. You know, we've got a lot of talent back here, and the game keeps growing and growing here locally, so hopefully we'll see some future Condors from Bakersfield in the future. And one of the cool things, guys, that we can talk about the Condors is just the growth of hockey in general around Kern County. We saw the Kern County Knights have success this year, bringing home that state championship. But, of course, at this level, we see a lot of success. So what can you say the Condors have done for the growth of the sport here in town? Obviously, just lending their name to the kids to come out and play has been a big step. When the, you know, we went to the AHL and they you know, changed the colors to the Oilers colors and we adopted those colors three, four years ago. It really helped bring a lot of players into the game and brought some recognition to our youth. We love it. And we're, they're looking good. And Matt, I got to ask you, uh, you think you can get out there and play amongst these kids? Uh, these kids are pretty intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Your kids are well trained and coached, I can <laughs> tell. But uh, I don't know, maybe I could take a shot on one. But I'm, if, if it comes to dropping the gloves, I don't want any of them. Yeah, I will say I probably couldn't even skate with these kids. But you know what I think? Maybe when we come back from break, we'll give it a shot. But I can tell you guys, uh, these, these kiddos around here, they range in ages, but they're looking good. So we have more with them as we return with Breaking the Ice. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. So of course we said we wanted to break in the ice a little bit too. And not only do we have future condors out here on the ice, but we have former condors players, kids out here too. But um, we're going to see if we have what it takes to play a little hockey. Let me see. Oh, are you Mike Hart's here. Are you going to get in the game or what? I'm Let's getting in the game, Mike. Let's go. Okay, Matt. Oh, let me hold this for you. Get in there, get in there. <laughs> all right, all right. We gotta, we go? okay. Watch the hair. Don't fall. Oh. Um, now, talking about the form, it's never good to do the ostrich approach or the, yeah, the flamingo where um, you do the one leg. That's Jay Woodcroft's going to teach me some lessons, but of course, we got some action here, guys. And these kids, they got some style that we don't have, but we do want to say. Uh, they are looking good, and maybe we'll have to get in some uniforms and get better on the ice. But we just want to say thank you so much for joining us for Breaking the Ice here with the 23 ABC family. We love to have you here. We're obviously excited about the hockey season. Mike Hart's excited. But, of course, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time.